Psalm 58, verse 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Kahakudash, Devon unto the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach this gospel and push this gospel to the four corners of the earth. Peace and salutation to the hopeful elect. Shalom. Now the inspiration for this video has come to me on behalf of the TikTok video that I just seen um, on YouTube. And this was the very first scripture that comes to my mind. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. Now, I'm going to get this, this scripture in the New Living Translation. And it reads... These wicked people are born sinners. Even from birth, they have lied and gone their own way. Okay? And we have to first ask our question, who is the wicked in the Bible? Who is the wicked? The wicked, you can go all the way back to the very beginning. In Genesis chapter 3. Okay? Let's go there right quick. And then we will pick up the video right quick. Genesis chapter 3, we're going to start at the 6th verse. Okay. Let's go back to the King James Version, which is the most authenticated version of the Bible. All the other versions, sometimes from time to time, we will teach on behalf of other uh, versions like the New Living Translations because it's in your face. You can't help but to understand what is being stated in the Scripture. But we always like to stick with the most authenticated version because some of these other versions of the Bible are watered down, okay? So, you, they, they, they state what needs to be said, but then what needs to be understood is so watered down, you don't get the gist of what's being said. So, Genesis chapter 3, and this is in the Garden of Eden, okay? And it says, <clears throat> um, in fact, let's go back here. Let's go up a little bit. And it says the fall of man. Okay, This is how we entered into sin. And what is sin? Let's get it right quick. Sin, by definition in the scripture, it is stated in 1 John 3 and 4. Let's get it right fast. So we can know what is expected of us to know and understand. It says, whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is transgression of the law. So let's look at the word transgression real quick. We're going to study that word pursuant to 2 Timothy 2.15. Okay. Let's look at the word uh, transgressor. It comes to us from the Greek. Let's hear it in the Greek. Strong's G 4160. Poeo. 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 Transgress means to what? Cast out. Cause. Um, let's see if we can find some other words here. Transgress the law. Okay. Give me a second here. Just bear with me. Give me just a second, right quick. <clears throat> Bear with me just for one second. Okay, for what? 
whatever reason, doesn't want to pronounce the word. Um, I do know I have some buffering issues going on in my signal path here in my room, so that's probably why I won't um, pronounce the word. But the word has transgress. To infringe... Transgress. Okay. Infringe or go beyond the bounds of a moral principle or other established standard of behavior. Okay. And let's get some synonyms for the word. Misbehave. Error. As in the word error. Fall from grace. Degenerate. Do wrong. Go astray. Slip up. Be out of order. Disobey, defy, infringe, breach, contravene, violate, break, infract. Okay? Alright? And the opposite of the word transgress would be to obey, as you can see there on the screen. So let's continue. Let's go back to the scripture. Okay? Um, wasn't finding what I was looking for in that scripture there, so we went to Google to find out what the word meant. Whosoever commits sin, transgresseth, break. Also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. We know that Romans 3.23 tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of our Father. Let's get it right quick and then we'll go back to the story. Okay. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of our power. And the glory of our power is to obey. Okay. Obey John 14.15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Right. If you love me, keep my commandments. Let's get it right quick while we're there, while we're on it right quick. John 4, 15. Uh, 14, 14. We're looking at the 15 verse. 15 verse says, if you, if you love me, keep my commandments. Those are my rules, my precepts, my scriptures, my laws, statutes, ordinances. Keep them. If you love me, keep them. That's what Yahweh Shem is saying to us in the scriptures. Okay? So let's go back to Genesis chapter 3 right quick. Now we know in Genesis chapter 3, it says the fall of man. Okay. And in Genesis chapter 3, giving you a, a backdrop. In fact, let's go ahead on and read from Genesis 3 and 1. I don't want this video to be long because it's going to tie directly in with our YouTube TikTok video. Okay. Now the serpent was the most subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord power hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea. Have our power said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Question mark. Remember, in the very beginning, um, oh, it's, it's going to stay here. Genesis chapter 2. And the woman, that woman was Israel. That woman is the daughter of Zion, which is Israel. Okay, who are the children of Israel? We know that the children of Israel, uh, the Native Americans, Negroes, and Latinos here in America, are of the 12 tribes of Israel. We know that Deuteronomy 28, 48 tells us that the children of Israel went into slavery. Okay? And I did a video on my channel maybe about two weeks ago stating that there is a difference between a slave and an indentured servant. And the children of Israel went into slavery. Okay? Now, and the woman, which is representative, representative of the children of Israel, and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, our power has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. Okay? Now. Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Stop. Now the law that was in the, the commandment, the law that was in the garden of Eden was... That they could eat or partake of any tree in the garden except the tree that is in the center of the, of the garden, which is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That they should not eat of it or they should not touch it unless they begin to die. Okay? Now. And now, watch what the serpent says. Watch what, and the word serpent means deceiver. Okay? That's what it means. Okay? A lot of people think that the serpent is a snake. And the snake said to, uh, to talk to the woman. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever... Heard a snake or any animal for that for that matter ever speak to a man? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. The answer is no. How do I know the answer is no? Let's let's take let's take a trip to Ecclesiastes one nine. One nine. Okay. Let's take a trip to Ecclesiastes one nine. By reading and studying our scriptures. 
we will begin to understand the knowledge of the truth. But we must read and study. Okay. Now, Ecclesiastes one nine. The thing that has been is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. So if a cat can't talk to you now, a cat couldn't talk back then. Period. According to the scripture. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. These scriptures are commandments. All these scriptures are commandments. They're laws. Okay? If a snake ain't talking to you now, if a snake ain't talking to you last year, if anybody out here that listen to some of my voice ever killed a snake, okay? Or anyone out there ever, um, anyone ever, uh, uh, saw was in the sense of someone killing a rattlesnake, which is very dangerous, okay? Then, we all know, for fear of what it could or might do, you know, in or around your house, maybe you have children out there playing, you know, playing around with piles of wood or in the wood in your backyard or whatnot. The Bible does tell us not that thou shalt not kill, but that's in the sense of murdering, okay? Because when you murder, you got to think about it. And you got to think about it some more, and then you got to get your weapon ready together and, and think about the beef that you have with this person. Then you go out and take someone's life, okay? Which is a violation of Proverbs 616, okay? So now, okay, so as you can see there, if, according to that scripture, if it ain't no snake to talk to you in all the times that I've ever had to kill a snake, okay, um, or whatnot, or, or kill any, 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 and we shouldn't be killing any animals at all, but we know that when sin entered in, the creation itself was tainted, okay, so now, and sin entered in, okay, and this is where, where it entered in at, at the fall of man, in this chapter, Genesis chapter 3, okay. So we know that according to the scripture, if it ain't happening now, it wasn't happening then. Okay? Period. Okay, now, let every man be a liar. Okay? And, um, in fact, uh, let, let's, let's just go back because I was getting ready to pull another precept which is more definitive of what I was speaking on behalf of. In fact, let's get into Ecclesiastes 3.15 while we're at it because that's another scripture that will prove to us that if it ain't happening now, it wasn't happening then. Um, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 15, let's get it. That which has been is now, and that which is to be has already been. And our power requires that which is past. So God requires that which is past, okay? So if if the snake well, ain't talking now, if, if, if the snake ain't talking about it now, and it wasn't talking about it then, and the Lord is requiring that which was happening back then, which the snake wasn't talking about it then, so it ain't going to be talking about it now. The, in that scripture, the serpent is a deceiver. Okay. All right. Genesis, that's Genesis 3. Okay. And who are the deceivers? Revelation 12, 9, the devil has deceived the whole world. Who are the deceivers? Receivers in this country right now is anything, anybody, any philosophy, any doctrine, any religion that contradicts the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh contradicting the Bible itself, okay? Period. We all know, and I always bring up this example all the time, since I was bringing up Genesis 1. We all know this right now. Um, it says the creation. In the beginning, Allah Hayyam created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of our power moved upon the face of the waters. Okay? Genesis 1 and 3. And our power says, let there be light, and there was light. And our power saw the light, saw the light that it was good, and our power divided the light from the darkness. Verse 5. And our power called the light day, and called the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So according to this scripture here, a day begins in the evening. At sundown. When the sun goes down, that begins a new day. I'm sure many of you who grew up in Christianity may have heard this little uh, 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 quote that people will say this from time to time. It's actually been inputted into a song. And it states that, um, jo uh, 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 what, how, how does it go? Um, 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 weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Why is weeping enduring for a night? For the night. Because the Bible tells us, and it says here in Genesis 1 and 2, in the beginning, Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, the Allahim. And that word there, God, is Allahim. Let's study it right quick. As you can see there, on the right hand side, 
Uh, you have God on the left hand side, then you have H, Hebrew 430. And then below the inscription in Hebrew, at the bottom it has, it has Elohim. Okay, let's hear him pronounce it right quick. Uh, let's hear it. Okay, it comes from the Hebrew. Okay, um, let's hear it. Strong's H430, entry 1. Eloach. Eloach. Second entry. Second entry. Elohim. Elohim. Okay. And the third entry. Eloach. Eloach. Okay. Eloach. And we know that this word is pronounced Allah Hayam. Okay. Allah means power and Hayam means plural. Right. And why is that like that? I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, as you can see there, God's, G-O-D-S, G-O-D-S in the ordinary sense, okay, um, of the supreme God, occasion applied by the way of the defense of the magistrates, sometimes as a superlative, angels, okay, now we know that the Lord says when he comes, he, he will not come as a man, he will come as an angel, he with all his glory and all his armies and all his chariots, okay, all right, so now, and let's go here. The rulers, the judges, the divine ones. Okay? So how that went down, our power, our power, Yahweh, sitting upon the throne, gave his word. He sent his word. Okay? All right? He sent his word. And when he created the first spirit man, which is our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah is his name. Okay? Not Jesus, Yahweh Shah. Okay? Then... Yahweh Shai created all the things that you see around you. That is the Son of Man. He created all the things that you see, okay? And the angels assembled it. They put it together. They caused it to come to, come to your existence to, for your eyes to see. So it took all three of them to create what you see here and everything that is to come. And it is called the Allah Hayam. Let's go back. All right, because the Bible says the divine ones, O-N-E-S, the rulers, the judges. And those judges are who? The 144,000, 12,000 from each tribe, okay? They're going to be the rulers uh, in, in the kingdom, okay? The Bible tells us that they, they, they will rule with Yahweh Shah for a thousand years, okay? And we know that 2 Peter 3, 9 tells us that a day in the Lord is as a thousand years. And a thousand years is as is like one day. Okay, now let's continue. Okay, it says, In the beginning, Allah Hayyam created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. We know that darkness in the strong concordance means evil. Again, weeping men endure for a night. We evil. Okay. In, 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 in the heavens, we will study war no more. He says he'll wipe the tears from our eyes. That's why it says, weeping men do it for a night. Evil. But joy cometh in the morning. And joy and peace are one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit pursuant to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, right? Okay? All right? So, so uh, actually, it's one of the fruits of the Spirit pursuant to, pursuant to uh, Galatians 5.22. Uh, let's get that right quick so I can make sure I'm correct. So I can make sure I'm correct. It's been a while since I joined. Since I visited there, there it is. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, which is patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Okay, you got. It. Now let's continue. Let's go back. Um, let's go to Genesis chapter one. First one. In the beginning, Allah Hayyam created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void because there was no rules here. There was no laws here, okay? And right now, what's going on in America, spiritual Babylon? Have you seen that the laws of Yahweh, the laws of the Bible, has been removed from this kingdom? And as you can see right now, everything is a mess, is it not? Think about it. Look at everything that's going on all around you, in your neighborhoods. People going by, shooting people. People driving by. People raping and robbing and murdering. People doing all kinds of stuff. But where did that come from? As long as we had the laws, statutes, commandments, orders of Yahweh, we had order. 
1 Corinthians 14, 4, let all things be done decent and in order. Now there is no order. Everything is in disorder because there's no order. Okay, and that's about chaos here. Okay, 1 Corinthians 4, 14, 33. And uh, says that God is not the author of uh, of chaos, of confusion. Actually, let's get it right quick. I can make sure I'm correct. I left this house. It was cold. Now it's hot. <coughs> Guess I need not complain. For our power is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Did I not say? Did I not say? Did I not just read that joy, peace, and love? Is one of the fruit of the, of the Spirit, uh, uh, Galatians 5.22. Okay, so all this is checking out with what I'm saying, saying to you. Everything is checking out, is it not? Okay, let's continue. Let's go back. Okay, let's go back. Genesis 1 and 2. And the earth was without form, no order, and void, no rulership, no, no upright, no righteous rulership, that is. Okay. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness is evil. Face of the deep. Who is who's the face of the deep? Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 16. You'll find out who that is. Go and read there. Now, and the spirit of our power moved upon the face of the waters. The spirit of our power moved upon the face, the face, the face, the face of the waters. Does water itself have a face or does it have a surface? So we know right then and there that this is a secret. This is a mystery. What's the mystery? And the spirit... Of our power moved upon the face of the waters. That's what? That is the hope of elect. Okay? Remember, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's what? That's the Holy Spirit. Okay? Yeah. Also, um, and so as you read there, um, as we go down to uh, 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 Genesis 1 and 5 where we were, and, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Okay? And the evening and the morning were the first day. So according to the Bible, a day begins in the evening at sundown. Okay, Just like it did in Genesis 1 and 2. In the beginning. In the beginning, the Allah Hayyam created the heavens and the earth. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. So a day begins in the evening at sundown. Why? Because after the hour of judgment, which is 3 a.m., and in the morning at 6 a.m., then the sun begins to rise. So what? when the sun begins to rise, what else is also happening? Joy is coming in the morning. Who is, who is joy? Who is that representative of? The day of the Lord. Okay. That's judgment. The day of the Lord. Okay. Hope you can receive that um, through the Spirit. Now, so as you can see, let's go back to Genesis 3 right quick. Okay. You're not going to spend too much time on this because I have videos on this on my, on my channel. I just want to point out a few things right quick. And then we're going to go out of that video. Okay. So the, the law that was in the Garden of Eden was that, uh, that Adam and Eve could, could touch. They could, they could not touch lock it. They could, they could eat up any tree. And in order to grab the fruit of the tree, they have to do what? They have to touch it. But of the tree that was in the, the tree of, that was in the center of the garden, which is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they could not eat of it and they could not touch it. Okay? All right. Now, let's go back. Verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, our power has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. See? The serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Okay? At that point in time, Eve had stopped listening to the laws of Yahweh Shemeshah and started listening to another doctrine, which is another set of rules. Which came from where? It didn't come from our power. It came from where? Where did it come from? Okay? Now, it came from the serpent, which means deceiver. Okay, and the words deceive means to, to basically set you up for a fall. That's what it means. Okay, the word deceiver means to, um, means to, uh, it's an illusion. It's not real. It's not the truth. Okay, so you, 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 you've listened to commandments of men and you've listened to fables, okay, which have led the children of Israel into error. And that is exactly what we did when we began to worship at altars made of wood and stone, Deuteronomy 4.28. Okay. Wood represents the cross, represent, represents Christianity. And also, uh, the stone is representative of the Kabbalah, of the Kabbalah, which is representative of Islam. Okay? That's, that, that, and that's just two. That's just two. Okay? Many of the other tribes around, um, around, the, uh, around the world in the different places are, are worshiping the dead. 
They're worshiping uh, all the worship the creation. They're worshiping the stars. The Bible tells us not to, not to be an astrologer, not to do wizardry, not to do necromancy, not to do any of those things. Okay, so we must return back unto Yahweh Shemim Shah, because our wickedness and our backsides will prove us. You can find that in Jeremiah three fourteen, Jeremiah two nineteen. Okay, and return on back, return back, repent, reverse, repent, and say, Lord, I'm sorry for doing all these things that I come to the knowledge of through the truth that you don't like and that you're not of and you're not a part of. I'll return back into the ways, statutes, commandments, and orders of Yahweh Shemem Shah by reading my Bible and putting into practice what I read in my life to the best of my ability. That's what it's all about. That's that, that's your ticket. That's your way up out of him. Period. Okay? Now, and the one, now here it is. Um, and here's what Genesis 3 5. For God, the, no, that's not even one skill. Okay, now. Verse 4, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now watch verse 5. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, wait a minute. How in the hell can she come to that conclusion that the tree is good for food? When the law was, don't eat of it, don't touch it. Then here comes somebody Overhand that she don't know from a can of damn paint. Okay? She ain't never seen this man before ever in her life, ever. He done come and enter in with some other madness that is against the truth, and she now figures that's good for food. You know, sometimes sometimes it's best that you not know of certain things, you know, but not her. Okay, now. And the woman and when the woman and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. Okay. All right. Where did she get this information from? Somebody she just seen today. <laughs> she don't know this man from a can of paint. Okay. That's down. And that represents the doctrines and the commandments. The commandments and traditions of men and other doctrine. That contradicts the Bible. Period. That's what that is representative of. Period. The first law given in the Bible. Adam had obeyed the law. Okay. Because the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 2 that Adam was not deceived. It was the woman that was in transgression of the law. Okay? Now. All right. Let's go back to 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also, give also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked. See, they ain't never knew nothing about being naked before. <laughs> they ain't know what that was. Now all of a sudden they somehow know, hey, we ain't got no clothes. God damn it, let's get something and cover us up. Woo! Yeah. And nakedness also is a representative of their iniquity, okay? Their sin that they had just committed. And their eyes were and the eyes of them were and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together to and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord, God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. That's the evening. Okay. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees in the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and Adam only. Okay. Notice that. Why? Because he's dealing with his son. That's right. Adam, remember now, the first spiritual man ever created was Yahweh Shah, Lord and Savior. Adam was the first physical man created. So Adam and Yahweh Shah is the same spirit man. Okay? And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he says, I heard thy voice in thy garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Now, up, up until all this time, if you read in, uh, in the beginning of Genesis, from Genesis 1 all the way up until this point in Genesis 3, uh, he, and when, when, when the Lord God had called him in the evening, he, he was there. He was always there. But they, weren't, they, they weren't at the same point, but there was at a point of understanding. Okay, Because up until this time, Adam had done all that our power had commanded him to do until now. Okay, Now, and he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Have you eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee not that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman who whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Mm. And the Lord Paul said unto the woman, What is this what is this that thou hast done? 
And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me. What? And I did eat. Let's look up the word serpent there. Look up the word serpent. Since everybody likes to see this is a snake, let's find out what a serpent is. Right quick. And that came out of Christianity. The, the snake said. Okay, it says a snake. It says a serpent. Let's read on. Let's, we need to find out what this serpent is. Serpent, snake. As in snake in the grass. That's a person you got to watch, right? Why? Because they always up to no good, right? Okay, now. Fleeing serpent. That's mythological. Is this a myth? No. These things really did happen. Okay, now. Image of. Okay, let's read some more. It says there at the very top of your screen, figurative of the oppressor. Who is the oppressor? E is our, our oppressors, okay? And Christianity, the Christianity is their religion. That does not belong to Yahweh but Shem at all, by no means. Okay. Crafty temper, tempter, okay? Let's keep on, let's read down some more. Serpent, so called from his hissing. Okay. All right. Give me a second. Give me a second, just bear with me just a second. Just bear with me just a second. Let's continue on. And the word beguiled. He said the serpent beguiled her. So we know that a serpent is a man. Okay. And also Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 through the 16th verse. The 16th verse also tells you that Lucifer is a man. And just think. People, th people thought that. People think that Lucifer is the devil himself. That's incorrect. The devil Satan is a spirit. Lucifer means false light bearer. False light. What's light? John 8 and 12 says, Yahweh Shah speaking says, I am the light of the world. So if he's if he is a false light bearer, then he is carrying the untruth. And he's speaking the untruth. And this he spoke this untruth and, and called doubt to enter into Eve's mind at this time in the garden. And she and she was in the transgression. We'll get that as well. Okay. Now, um let's go back. Let's get this new living translation. Trying to do a little bit of justice on this read on this uh, scripture here as best as I can. In the time that I have allotted here. Okay. All right. All right. It was three fourteen. Right. Let's get it. Verse 11, who told you that you were naked, the Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? Verse 12, the man replied, Adam, it was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, what have you done? The serpent deceived me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Verse 14, then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than uh, more than all more than all animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. And that word "dust" means confusion. Okay, and that's why to this day they they can't even understand the Bible. 
they know the Bible, but they can't understand the mysteries of the Bible. The only people that can understand the mysteries of the Bible are the children of Israel, the house of Israel, the sons of Jacob, which went to Psalm 147, 19, and Amos 3 and 2. Okay, now, then he said to the woman, okay, um, verse 15, and I will cause you, and I will, and I will cause hostility between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring, and he will strike your head, and you will strike his heel, okay, and that is, and the King James, the King James Version says, and I will cause enmity, enmity is hatred, that's what it is, let's get it again, then we're going to go into our video here. Verse 15, and I will put enmity between thee and the, and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. Okay. So those are the sons and the children of Israel. The sons of Jacob, children of Israel. So he says, I will cause, I will put enmity. Enmity is hatred. Let's get it right quick while I'm at it. I had another name for this video, but because I've spent so much time in this, in these scriptures, um, the Holy Spirit has given me a new name for this video. Enmity. Hostility. Hatred. Okay. Let's go back. Let's go back. And I will put enmity between thee, who is thee, the serpent, and the woman, who is the woman, Israel, the daughter of Zion, Israel, and between thy seed, whose seed, whose seed, the serpent seed, which is who, E, and all of his people, okay, the, all the way through Cain, 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 same people, Cain people, what did Cain do, kill Abel, okay, Cain it killed Abel, <laughs> it's the same people, the same exact people, okay, the same people. The same people that put the children of Israel in to, hold on. The same people that put the children of Israel into slavery, Deuteronomy 28. Same people. The Chaldeans, same people. Same people, which are right now, the same people who is making those decisions up there. And, you know, the, the king of Babylon. Who is the king of Babylon? What is Babylon? Babylon, spiritual Solomon, spiritual Egypt, Revelation 11. Babylon, the mystery of the hearts, which is who America? Same exact people. Ecclesiastes 1 now, we covered it. What has been shall be again, for there is nothing new under the sun. Right? Ecclesiastes 3.15 also as well. Okay, let's continue. God quite requires that which is past. It's the same thing. Same thing that happened in the Garden of Eden is the same thing that's still happening right now. Same thing. Ain't nothing changed. Malachi 3, 6, we'll get that in a minute. And Hebrews 13, 8, we'll get that as well. Let's continue. And I will put enmity, hatred, between thee, who is thee, the serpent, and the woman, who is the woman, the daughter of, the daughter of Zion, Israel, okay? And between thy seed, whose seed? Seed is my children coming out of me, my offspring coming out of my loins, and, and my children's children, and my children's children, and my children's children, and, my, and continuing on from this day to God to Eden, all the way through Cain, killing Abel, all the way through. Up until now, same thing. Ain't nothing changing. It's the same thing. Okay? It's the same thing. The same thing. And I will put into hatred between thee, the serpent, and the woman, the daughter of Zion, Israel, and between thy seed, the serpent seed, and her seed. Who's her seed? The twelve tribes of Israel into their generation after generation after generation after generation after generation. It shall bruise thy head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. Until the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thou desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. That's right. That's right. The woman is the head, the Salaki. The man is the head of the woman. The anointed is the head of the man. You can find that in First Corinthians chapter eleven. Okay? Start the beginning, around, somewhere around the 7th, the 8th, the 5th, 6th verse, 7th verse. Uh, I know the 14th verse says it's a shame for a um, uh, 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 man's head to be covered when he's praying, praying or prophesying. Just, just read that for, that chapter. The chapter ain't that long to read. Just read it. You can't, if it don't make a whole lot of sense to you in the King James Version, go to the New Living Translation like I've done. And it'll, it'll be all in your face. I promise. I promise it'll be all in your face. 
Okay, now. And unto Adam he said, Because you have hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, you listen to the woman. All right, now. That also goes back to the fact of that those, those videos, I think around the fourth or the fifth video on my channel, if you go back to the very beginning of my channel, I asked, can a woman teach or preach the Bible? No. Because look, look what the Lord says here. Listen to what the Lord says here now. Listen to what the Lord says. And unto Adam, verse 17, and unto Adam he said, who is he? Our father, our creator, Yahweh. Everybody calls him God, okay, but his name is Yahweh, okay. Because you have hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, because you have listened and did according to what your wife said to do, okay, <laughs> and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Cursed is the ground. You can go through Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 through the from the 15th verse to the 68th verse, those are the curses for the children of Israel for what we did here in the garden. Period. 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 There are many curses there. Okay? There are many curses. And they are expounded upon all throughout the book. The entire book. Okay, now. Let's continue. And unto Adam, thou, and unto Adam he said, because you have hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, which is a woman. Okay? And have and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, curse of the ground for thy sake. And in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. You see what I'm saying? So now that was the physical. Right now we are eating of our daily bread right now because all things are spiritual. God is a spirit, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. John six sixty three. The flesh, probably nothing, is the spirit that quickeneth. The words I speak are spirit and life. Now, and right now, we are eating spiritual manna. Why? Because we are eating, we, we are now un un we are unraveling the loot, the, the Yahweh Shah has loosed the seals of the book, but we can understand it now. Okay? So now that we can understand the book, we're now breaking down these mysteries. To, it is to you, it is known the mysteries of the kingdom. Okay? Amos 3, 7, surely the Lord God will do nothing unless he first reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So we're breaking down the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom. That spiritual manna. Spiritual food. Okay? Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of, the, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it were you taken... For dust, for dust thou art, and unto dust shall you return. Okay? Alright. So I just want to bring that to your attention. As you can see right there, there were many truths there. Okay? And remember there. Um, let's get first Timothy 2 and 9 while we're at it. Okay, and then we'll get Malachi 3 and 6. And uh, actually, um, I started out to make one video, but now I'm going to change. I'm going to pull two videos out of the same lesson. Two lessons out of the same one video here. First Timothy 2 and 9. And it reads what? It reads what? Okay. Women instructed. Let's start from the ninth verse. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel and shamefacedness and sobriety, not with parted hair or gold or pearls or costly or ring. Because that the pride would enter into us then. We we already are proud people, okay. So he's get, he's he, he's stating to him, um, he's stating uh, through Timothy uh, how our women should be, how our women should dress themselves, okay. Uh, verse ten, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. She shouldn't be saying shit. That's how we went off in the very beginning. That woman. That woman, Holy Spirit ain't dealing with her? Hell no. You see what happened in the garden? I just read it. I just read it. But let's wrap it up with this. Okay? That woman. But I suffer a woman, slucky, but I suffer not a woman to teach. And if you look up preach in the song recorded, it's going to say teach or proclaim. That's still teaching. Because if somebody asks you a question, if you've spoken the scripture, you're going to have to break that scripture down. And let me tell you something. 
A woman is not going to be able to break these scriptures down. It is not possible. If it is, the word is a lie. And I know the word is not a lie. Period. Because here it is right here. Listen very carefully. Verse 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to use of authority over a man, but to be in silence. The word use of means to exercise authority over as in, as in you, you work in an apartment, but y'all got a, a, a female supervisor. That's incorrect. That's incorrect. That's incorrect. Why? Because a woman is not aware of all the laws, statutes, and commandments and ordinances of Yahweh Shem Shah. She don't even understand it. She don't. But she'll listen to that man. <laughs> she, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know where all them parts went to. Just, just, just give it to Mr. Rick. Yeah, Mr. Rick got to handle it all. Yeah. So when you're in trouble, you give it to Mr. Rick. But when it's your time to shine, oh, yeah, I want the clout. Okay, that's incorrect. Let's continue. Uh, verse 12, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to use of authority over man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Okay? All right? And remember, I tell you, Adam is the first physical man, representative of the first spiritual man, which is who? Yahweh Shai. All things begin in the spiritual realm and then manifest themselves into the physical realm. A lot of us learn that in Christianity. <laughs> okay, that's still, that's still true. Okay? That, that's, that's still true. Okay, now. And... And the woman was not, it's locked and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So the woman broke the law. Okay? The woman broke the law. Now, all right? Notwithstanding, she shall, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Okay? So I want to let you, I just wanted to break it down right, right there to you right quick. That, uh, what's going on? Yes, I'm very low in my remote. Okay, so as you can see there, it was a woman that was in transgression. So we've been able to cover right then and there that the woman is to be in silence. Okay, in fact, let's go to word. Um, uh, let's pick up Malachi 3, 6. First, then we'll go to another precept that's going to break down what the word preach means, which is 2 Timothy uh, 4 and 2. Right now, let's go to Malachi 3 and 6. Okay, because I said that we the Lord don't never change. He requires that which is past. Malachi 3, 6. For I am the Lord power, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. The word consumed refers to uh, the, the second death, period. Okay? So, I mean, with all, if, if, the, if the Lord was going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, we, none of us will never get there. He be coming back looking for a remnant that won't even exist. Why? Because right now, everything that we're learning, we're learning the knowledge and truth and wisdom and understanding of Yahweh, but Shema, shout through the prophets of Great Millstone, and through all like prophets speaking the same thing, all right, which is the breakdown and the mysteries and the secrets of this word, period. Everybody ain't going to get it because everybody ain't supposed to get it. Only the elect will get it and understand and practice and repent, period. That's that. Hebrews 13 and 8, while I'm there. Okay. Period. I know from time to time, I sometimes I get on this and I start rolling the spirit and I start to cover many different topics and many different areas. But that's all good because then we begin to understand, we begin to see the pattern in the scriptures of Yahweh Shemel Shah dealing with us in every instance. And then we can begin to understand the mind and the heart of Yahweh Shemel Shah. That's, the, that's why when I first called myself, uh, when I first had heard that the book of Enoch was a book, I started reading it just a little, not really a lot. I didn't order the book or anything like that. Every now and then online, I'd find on YouTube someone has um, has uh, has allowed the book to be read through another. Um, now some of you have the computerized voice or whatnot, the uh, avatar. The avatar is reading the scriptures or whatnot. And when I first heard it, I listened, I listened to that bit. I think that video was something like three hours long. I listened to about maybe a total of maybe 40 minutes. I, I listen to this section for 10 minutes and I skip through another section, you know, according to the subheadings of the time. They have the subheadings listed with the times at which they start to go through that part of that, that book. And I immediately knew, even before uh, Great Millstone had told me that it was a work of, it was a work of the Adumians. It, it was written not by Israelite. I knew that. How I knew? Because the stuff that was spoken of in that book ain't spoken of nowhere else in the Bible. And the, the things that are that things that are of, of utmost concern to Yahweh Shem El Shah for the children of Israel to get and understand and learn from and repent of, none of that type of stuff is written in, in that book. 
I said, wait a minute. Then that book also began to go through the, the, uh, <laughs> it also began to go through the, um, the names of wicked spirits, which are demons, okay? These are evil spirits. The names of them, what they were created for, and how to summon them. But wait a minute. There is no way for me to summon Gabriel right now. I, was about, I, I, I don't know how to do it. I, I can't. I, there, there's, there's no instruction on that. So if there's no instruction in that book, in that in these other books of the Bible to include the Papa, why all of a sudden is it in that book? Okay, wait a minute. The book of Enoch goes through the names of the evil spirits, the evil angels, and what they were created for and how to summon them. But nowhere else in the Bible does it go through any any breakdown on the righteous angels and what they were created for and how to summon them. That's suspect. That's very suspect. Why? Because the Lord says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he's, he's the same all throughout the book. Malachi 3, 6, we just read it. Let's also get Hebrews 13, 8. It's on your screen. Yahweh Shah Mashach is the same yesterday and today and forever. So if he's the same yesterday, for, today, and forever, this book has a book that just came up after, in the end, all things as we, be, as we the children of Israel begin to wake up and come to the knowledge of the truth and understand of Yahweh Shah Mashach. Then all of a sudden, this book here pop up. That's incorrect. First John 4 and 1 tests the spirits by the spirit, for not every spirit is of me. That is a deceiving book written by a deceiver. Okay? Let's get one Psalm 147 and then we're going to close. Psalm 147, 19. I didn't mean this video to be long because I had I was another direction I was going to go in this video, but seeing as how I got into Genesis chapter 3 and started breaking it down, it, it took some time. So Psalm 147, 19, he showed us his word unto Jacob. His statutes and judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt so with any nation. He has not dealt so with any nation. As far as his judgment, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Power. Let's look up the word show with. You're going to see it means to make known. That's why we're able to break these scriptures down like this. That's why we can we can, we, we, we can tell you what a word means. Go into strong concordance. And when we go into strong concordance, the word is sitting right there. Okay? Because we understand the scriptures. And that's according to the Holy Spirit, so I'm not boasting in the way form or fashion. Okay, now. Alright. To stand boldly to to front. Stand boldly out opposite. To manifest, to announce. Always by word of mouth to one present. Uh, expose, predict, explain. Okay. Um, denounce, expound. Okay, why? Fully. Messengers. Yeah. The hope elect are messengers. They're angel. They're angels in flesh. That's who they are. They are righteous angels in flesh. Okay. Um, here it is. To be conspicuous, tell, make known. Okay. All right. To declare, make known, expound, to inform of, to publish, declare, proclaim, to avow, acknowledge, confess, to be told, be announced, be reported. Yes. Now, let's to wrap up. Let's go uh, to the word preach. What it means. And then we'll close the video down. Okay. And, uh, my, okay. Second Timothy 4 and 2. Oh, no wonder. Second Timothy 4 and 2. Preach the word. There it is in the second verse. Preach the word, be instant, in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So we are, the word reprove and rebuke means to correct. Okay? It means to correct. You know, to, to set you, to, to stop with the madness. Let me show you what the scripture says. Let me tell you and let me go and show you. Let me pull some other precepts to support what I've said as far as what the law is and how we should look at these things and how these things should be done correctly. In order, First Corinthians fourteen and forty as well, right now. Let's start the word preach. Comes from the Greek. Strong's G twenty seven eighty four. Keruso. Keruso. Okay. Preach means to um to herald as a public crier. Because when you, when you look at the men out there on the streets teaching, they are howling. They are crying out to the children of Israel to, to, 
to be to become aware of their ways and to turn back to Yahweh by Shem Yahshah. We're also crying out, letting them know of their transgressions and how the Lord is going to destroy them if they stay in this state. Period. Okay. I also preach, publish, proclaim, right? To be herald, to officiate, to proclaim. Okay. To be a herald, to officiate as a herald, to proclaim in the manner of a herald, to publish, proclaim openly. Okay? All right. Of the public proclamation of the gospel of matters pertaining to it. Okay? So that's what it means to preach. It means to go out and say, say aloud. Speak out. Proclaim it. Proclaim it. Okay? Proclaim it. So I'll just listen to edifying and pass come to the heart and glory and power of Yahweh, by Shemim, Shabbat, by Shemim, Kakodash. Double unto the elders and apostles of the great millstone who rule well, who teach this gospel and push this gospel before corners of the earth, say, Chesno, Falek, Shalom.